You know, Felix, I've been thinking. Actually, never mind. What? You can't say that and then not tell me. Come on, out with it. Okay, it's just... Even though you never show it, I can tell you really care about Dimitri and the others. <coughs> you all right there, Felix? There's no reason to get all choked up over it. <sighs> it's your fault for saying something so ridiculous. Hey, you're the one who asked. But it's true, isn't it? I know I'm right. And what proof do you have? Well, for one, you move way better when you're fighting alongside them. <laughs> That's only because I've known them so long now, I can predict their every move. The boar always rushes straight into enemy lines, so I have to be ready to cover him. We don't coordinate, though. I just stick around to make sure the coast is clear for him to run wild. Huh. But when you're fighting with Ingrid, you're usually the one who ends up charging forward. Yes, because her Pegasus is an easy target for enemy archers. It's better for me to dash ahead first and eliminate any potential threats. Uh-huh. So then why do you always get surrounded when you're fighting with Sylvain? Because the braggart always insists on showing off. Though, if nothing else, he does have the skill to fight his way out of any bind. Sounds like that's not part of your strategy, then. But you'd still never pull it off if you didn't trust each other. <laughs> it's all natural for a soldier. Is that how things are when you've known someone your whole life? Anyway, we're done here. Talking to you is exhausting. Well, well. Just the gal I wanted to see. I've got a bit of a favor to ask. You know that special sword you fight with? Oh, I was wondering if you'd let me take a peek at it. Can't say I expected this kind of interest coming from you, though. You do remember I'm the heir to House Gautier, don't you? I've been studying the art of combat ever since I was just a kid. Well, you always skip out on training, so... Anyway, here. This work? It sure does. What a weird sword. You know what it's made of? It doesn't look like iron or steel to me. I couldn't tell you. Honestly, I have no idea. What about how you can make it appear right out of thin air? Is that some sort of magic? Nah, not exactly. It kind of just comes to me when I call it. Well, that's vague. Uh, one more question then. Would I be able to use your sword if I wanted to? Hmm, doubt it. The thing vanishes the second I let go of it. I guess I was just thinking how nice it'd be if there were more weapons like yours out in the world. You know, a hero's relic can take down hundreds or even thousands of soldiers in a single swing. Depending on who's doing the swinging, of course. But as soon as the wielder dies, that's it. If you don't have a crest, it's nothing more than a fancy-looking hunk of whatever they're made of. Of course, that wouldn't be an issue if everyone could just use a sword like yours, right? It's not like you can just make a second one or something. That's actually a pretty interesting idea. You've given this a lot of thought, haven't you? Hey, you're talking to the future Margrave Gatte here, remember? Of course I'd think about this kind of stuff. After all, us nobles wouldn't have nearly as much work to do if everyone could fight with the relics. And then I could spend all my time flirting with you instead. Yeah, not interested. Don't make me tell Ingrid about this. Huh. So House Yvonne is actually just a branch of House Blathed? Yes. Though really, if you trace any noble bloodline back far enough, you will find most of them are related in one way or another. Duke Yvonne possesses the Crest of Karen while her grandfather possessed the minor crest of Fraldarius. Yet another of her ancestors bore the crest of Blathed, which is passed down through the royal bloodline. So you just gotta have a crest to inherit the family title, huh? Doesn't matter which one it is? In general, yes. The nobility used to be more particular about their requirements, but that is in the past now. Since the houses all keep intermingling, none of them really have a pure bloodline anymore. Meaning they don't get to be picky about which crests they get. Though in truth, the main reason why crests are so valued is because they allow their bearers to wield the hero's relics, passed down through generations. In other words, one who possesses a crest compatible with the family's relic is much more likely to inherit the family title. And at times in our history, crest bearers have been passed over entirely for the inheritance. Ugh, can you just pick a rule and stick to it? Why do you nobles always have to make stuff so complicated? If you stay ignorant, the soldiers you command will lose respect for you, and His Majesty's reputation will be irreparably damaged. 
You're the legitimate heir and you have a crest, which means you're gonna inherit the family title someday. But what about all that talk of becoming a knight? Can you even do that if you're leading your house? Hell, I have dreamt of obtaining knighthood and defending the king ever since I was a little girl. But I'm afraid it's not meant to be. And none of your siblings have crests, do they? Isn't there anyone who can take the title for you? My eldest brother says he is willing to do so if necessary. After all, the decision comes down to what the family and the heir want. Usually, leadership passes to a child with a crest. There have been exceptions, as I mentioned before. Even so, it is the duty of every kingdom noble to take up their relic in defense of their people. Not to mention my father is not the only one who wants to see me in charge of the house. The citizens of Galatea are hoping for the same. But wouldn't you still be able to protect the king, even if you ended up a count? I am not sure I follow.